Dr. Brian Heverland here with Lexington ENT and Allergy. And neck masses are relatively common. As otolaryngologists, we often remove these neck masses either to obtain biopsy or to try to definitively treat the problem. Now this is a broad topic, so it's hard to make a video that specific because every situation with a neck mask can be a little bit different depending upon its location and depth. Surgeries to remove neck masses usually takes about an hour to do. You're going to have an incision either over the mass or sometimes slightly below the mass so that we can uh, navigate around some of the important nerves that are in that region. Some of the common nerves that are in the neck that we certainly want to try to avoid are a nerve that passes here that's called the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve that provides movement of the lower lip and that can be at risk through some neck um, tumors. There's also a nerve that goes to the shoulder called the accessory nerve that helps innervate or move the trapezius muscle that helps people shrug the shoulder afterwards. And that nerve kind of runs through the upper portion of the lateral neck and it can be injured uh, with neck masses or neck biopsies. There are nerves deeper that help control tongue movements and taste. And so you can have speech articulation problems or numbness or loss of taste along the side of the tongue if that were to occur. Uh, there's a, a nerve called the vagus nerve and there's branches of that uh, that help move the vocal cords around. So hoarseness after these surgeries is a possibility as well depending upon the depth and location of the growth or tumor. It typically takes about a week to get the pathology results back from uh, neck mass excisions. So you're going to have an incision um, and that incision is going to be closed with typically some dissolvable layers of skin or dissolvable stitches and then a top layer of skin glue or stitches that have to be removed at usually about the one week post-operative mark. Now I, we usually don't put dressings over, you know, put a dressing over the area, but sometimes depending upon the location it may require some sort of dressing. It's very common to have some swelling over that incision or above the incision during the recovery period and that usually is going to just go away over a couple of weeks after the surgery. If there's skin glue, we like for people not to put any lotions or ointments on that. Uh, I like people to not shower for 48 hours and not let water run over that. Now the, those are watertight and, and waterproof, but we still like uh, the water not to rinse away that skin glue or to peel it up if possible over that initial start of the healing process. So again, no lotions or ointments. You can cover the incision if you're going somewhere and you don't want someone looking at it, but generally you don't have to. It's better to keep it kind of exposed and open. People don't typically have a ton of pain after neck mass excisions, uh, but some and mild to moderate pain would be expected. You may be prescribed some pain medications. You may just be asked to take Tylenol afterwards. We like for people not to take ibuprofen uh, or a leave or aspirin for a week before the surgery just to try to help reduce the bleeding risks with that. If you're on any serious blood thinners, you probably talk that over with your doctor about how to manage that uh, preoperatively. So afterwards, uh, just try not to be do anything strenuous. Try to take careful care of that area. Um, we don't want people straining or doing any kind of weight lifting or serious exercise for about two weeks after most of these things. You're going to have a post-operative visit about a week afterwards where either you review that pathology and go over all those things. Hope that helps. If you have any questions or problems, we can always be reached at 803-936-7530 and we're available 24-7 for serious emergencies through the, or through the emergency department. Thank you.